<laughs> Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? If he offered you knowledge, wealth, or power, would it be worth the cost of your soul? Or maybe the one thing you desire is for your troubled soul to be healed so that you may at last find peace. Perhaps a bargain could be struck, and who better to deal with than the horned statue? This mysterious and questionable being offers Link the ability to alter his essence at a cost. But with little knowledge of this spirit in the statue, is there enough to figure out the identity of who's really trapped inside? I believe I have the answer, and with it, I hope to shed a bit more light on what's actually going on in the background of the series, hidden in the darkness. Let me tell you about a stranger who had met a terrible fate. As with any investigation, let's begin with what we do know. In Breath of the Wild, the Horn statue is located just outside Hateno Village. It looks like the goddess statue seen throughout Hyrule except it has a darker shade, wings, and horns, giving it a demonic appearance, and it gives off what seems to be this aura of darkness. Its Japanese name? The Devil Statue. Before we even talk, we see the prompt lets us pray to it, and its first line of dialogue here lets us know that like the goddess statues, people used to pray to this one. It tells us it used to be a dealer in life and power, and in the original Japanese, it refers to itself as a god. It gave people whatever they wished for in exchange for their souls or part of their spirit, and it can manipulate the spirit of Link in the form of heart containers or stamina vessels. But its dealings upset the goddess Hylia, who punished it by trapping it inside the statue. The villagers are aware of its existence, but only show the statue neglect and disrespect. This first time interacting with the statue begins the quest, The Statue's Bargain, where we learn that the statue lets Link buy and sell parts of his soul in exchange for rupees. The statue is very businesslike. He's upfront about what he wants. He's not rude to Link and only wishes to make deals for profit, in this case, for rupees or spirit. And he tells Link that he views money and life as the same. Completing the first deal ends the quest and Link can return any time to make another trade with the statue. This idea of a dark spirit or demon offering wishes in exchange for souls goes back to the classic German story of Faust, a man who sells his soul to the devil and agrees to eternal damnation in exchange for power and knowledge. In popular fiction, these deals with the devil usually have some sort of trick or deception to them to make sure the devil can claim your soul. With the horn statue though, while it does make these Faustian bargains, it doesn't exactly give the impression it's trying to fool us or be evil. It just wants to acquire souls or money from those willing for its own interests, and it respects the etiquette of buying and selling. The statue returns in Tears of the Kingdom, this time located in the royal hidden passage beneath Lookout Landing. Its quest this time is called a deal with the statue, probably because of these guys, but we'll talk about them later. Aww. Speaking to the statue, it adds a little more background information than what we got in the previous game. It again tells us that highly attracted in the statue because of its dealings, but we learn the statue was originally placed inside a village. Continuing its bargains, Hylia again moved it to the outskirts of that village, where it was scorned and neglected. Based off this dialogue, we can safely assume that the village it's referring to is Hateno. The spirit in the statue would have been trapped and placed within Hateno village. But continuing its life for money deals, Hyvia again moved it to where we find the statue in Breath of the Wild, away from the townspeople. It tells Link it was again moved, at one time trapped in a pond, and eventually ending up in the Royal Hidden Passage. The pond it could be referring to is Furley Pond, next to the statue in Breath of the Wild. Maybe because Link bartered with it, the statue was pushed into the pond hoping no one could interact with it there, but then was ultimately hidden underground as a final measure. The curious thing though, 
is that it was Hylia who trapped the spirit and Hylia who moved it. If it was really Hylia, then that would mean the spirit has been trapped since before Skyward Sword, because we know that the last time Hylia was around was before the events of that game, before she sacrificed her divinity to become Zelda. I would like to point out though that in Skyward Sword, Fee refers to Zelda as Hylia, because Fee knows Hylia became Zelda. Maybe the Horn statue also knows this fact, and when it says Hylia, it's referring to a Zelda, since every Zelda contains the blood of the goddess, and may or may not be a reincarnation depending on your opinion. Maybe it was really another Zelda who trapped the spirit and moved the statue, or maybe Hylia the god still exists somehow. Either way, this means the spirit could have been trapped at any point in the timeline, and not specifically before Skyward Sword. We can also get more hints about the statue from an NPC named Jiren in the emergency shelter. She makes some speculations about the statue, referring to the spirit trapped within as a god, and she also gives us this interesting line of dialogue. As there is a goddess of light, then it follows that she would have an opposite, the horned god. Like light and dark, one cannot exist without the other. Their power manifests through the other's existence. If the horn statue is supposed to be the devil, as referenced by its Japanese name, then that would connect to the Faustian bargain idea. And if the goddess statues are like the angels who serve Hylia, then that would explain why the horn statue looks similar to the goddess statues, since the devil himself originally was an angel who was cast out of heaven. In the Legend of Zelda series, you would most likely assume the devil's equivalent to be Demise. In Skyward Sword, we learn of the backstory of Hylia and her rivalry with Demise. These two are opposites of each other in the form of good versus evil. Like light and dark, one cannot exist without the other. The only problem with this theory is that Demise doesn't line up with the statue. While Hylia continues to exist in the form of Zelda, Demise's hatred continues in the form of Ganondorf, not Demise himself. He also wanted to conquer the world and claim the Triforce. The statue only wishes to gain profit in the form of money and souls, and the characteristics don't match. Demise was this great evil. The statue is more of a business person, more of a salesman looking to strike a deal. Plus, Demise was trapped in the Master Sword and over time decayed within, so if not Demise, then who could be in the statue? We're first introduced to the happy mask salesman in Ocarina of Time after he opens his mask shop in Castletown. Once inside, we learn that this mysterious fellow deals in masks that bring happiness to everyone, and he makes Link an offer. If Link can sell the masks of the salesman, then he will be allowed to borrow more masks. This is not a main story requirement and is completely optional. It's just a side quest hidden in the background. The happy mask salesman himself is not an important character in this game either. He's just an unassuming shopkeeper in the shadow of Hyrule Castle. But if Link accepts the salesman's offer, he becomes an agent of the salesman, selling masks and bringing happiness to everyone. And he tells Link after he's sold all the masks, he will become happy himself. The side quest isn't too big. Link only has to sell four masks to complete it. But his reward is access to the Mask of Truth, a Sheikah artifact that lets him speak to Gossip Stones and learn their secrets. How the salesman came into possession of this mask is unknown, but Link is also rewarded with other masks that he can borrow as well. Except for the Mask of Truth, the other masks don't really do anything besides make Link look cool and get different reactions from people. The salesman doesn't come across as an evil person, definitely mysterious, but not giving us any reason to be suspicious of his motives. The only time we see a change in his happy demeanor is if Link returns to his shop after selling a mask, but not having enough money to pay him back. His face changes to that of anger, mad at Link for seemingly disrespecting the agreement they had, and he kicks Link out until the money can be paid back. In the adult timeline, at the end of Ocarina of Time, we can see the salesman celebrating with the rest of the people of Hyrule over the defeat of Ganondorf. In the Fallen timeline, we can actually find him in Labrina in Oracle of Ages. 
He set up his mask shop there and continues to sell masks, and although he is still a minor character, he is part of the trading sequence, seemingly still making deals with people. The Child timeline is where he is the most prominent in Majora's Mask. Arriving in Termina beneath the clock tower, Link is followed by him, and upon revealing himself, he tells Link of how the Skull Kid stole an important mask. The salesman then makes Link another deal. If Link can get back the ocarina that was stolen, he will restore Link back to his normal self, and in exchange, all he asks is for Link to retrieve the mask that was stolen. After completing the first three-day cycle and recovering the ocarina, the salesman teaches Link the Song of Healing, a melody that heals evil magic and troubled souls, turning them into masks. Like the Mask of Truth, how this salesman knows such a powerful song is a mystery to us. The Song of Healing heals restless spirits, and in exchange, a small part of those spirits is used to create a mask. It's not that the soul itself is trapped in the mask. The song brings peace to the spirit and removes whatever worries were preventing it from moving on to the afterlife. In a 2015 Game Informer interview, Eiji Aonuma briefly talked about the main transformation masks of the game, saying those masks contain the memories of people who have died, and that there are things they really wanted to do before they left this world. These memories are the part of the spirit that's left behind, that's used to create these masks, as the spirit itself departs the land of the living. Having this ability to heal souls and create masks from spirit energy also calls into question the origins of the other masks the salesman owns as well. At the end of the game, after Link defeats the spirit of Majora inside the mask, the salesman once again claims it for his collection, sensing the evil inside is gone forever, and he politely heads back to his travels. But as a final word, he mentions how Link was able to make a lot of people happy, and that the masks obtained in Link's quest are filled with happiness. Playing Majora's Mask, Link acts as the agent of the salesman once again, like he did in Ocarina of Time. Except, instead of giving masks to make people happy, Link is rewarded with masks. And this is the unspoken bargain that he makes with the people of Termina. He completes tasks for them, and in exchange he is given a mask, which, based on what the salesman tells us at the end of the game, are filled with the happiness Link brought them. Almost like a small part of those people are in the masks, Link brings happiness to their troubled souls in the face of death. The salesman also seems to have some sort of hidden power. If Link fails to play the Song of Time and the moon crashes into Termina, it seems like it's the salesman who saves Link and restarts the three-day cycle, asking how he did almost like he's aware of the previous three-day loop. Also, after we recover the Ocarina of Time and return it to him, from his perspective it should have seemed like we exited the clock tower and then immediately re-entered with the Ocarina, but there's no indication of him being surprised by this, again like he is aware that we have time traveled. These are the only times we see the Happy Mask salesman in the series, and it's unknown what his fate was in each timeline. Or is it? If we compare the Horned Statue and the Happy Mask Salesman, we can see a lot of similarities. We have the Horned Statue, who calls himself a dealer in life and power, and we have the Happy Mask Salesman, two characters known for their trading. Both characters have the ability to manipulate souls, the Horned Statue being able to directly take part of one's soul and change it into a different form, as we see when he swaps heart containers for stamina vessels and vice versa. The Happy Mask Salesman knows the Song of Healing, able to calm a soul to allow it to travel to the afterlife, and being able to use part of that soul to create a mask, changing its form. These characters make deals involving souls, the Horn Statue being pretty upfront about it, but with the Salesman, it's a little less obvious. Using the Song of Healing, the offer is this. Your soul can be healed, but in exchange, a small part of it will be taken and used to create a mask. With the people of Termina, Link helps them in their time of need, and in exchange, he is rewarded with a mask filled with their happiness, filled with a part of their soul, and these people are unaffected by this. The Horn Statue himself mentions how he is able to take part of Link's essence and leave him unaffected, saying his touch is as subtle as ever. And the statue and the salesman are both misunderstood characters. 
The horn statue, with its demonic appearance and life for money bargains, initially comes across as a potentially evil being, but all it cares about is profit, and it's only ever honest with Link. The deals it makes are never malicious and are only ever done with willing customers. The salesman, having the ability to trap souls in masks and being this mysterious character would make one think he has ulterior motives. All he wants is to spread happiness throughout the land. It's for these reasons that I believe the spirit in the horned statue and the happy mask salesman are one and the same, both salesmen who barter with souls. We know the happy mask salesman traveled the world gathering masks for his collection, and maybe Hateno Village was the last place he visited before his soul bargaining got him in trouble and trapped within the horned statue. Even though we have other characters who deal with souls and spirits, I don't believe any of them are who's trapped in the horned statue. But let's go through them for the sake of argument. Giovanni is a man living in Castletown during the time of Twilight Princess. When we first meet him, he tells us of how he sold his soul for great wealth, but the unknown consequence of that deal was that he was turned into a golden statue. He sends Link to collect the souls of the Poes who hold pieces of his spirit, and in return, Link can be rewarded with a bottle of great fairy tears, and eventually money. Gathering 60 Poes for Giovanni removes the curse and restores him to his normal self. It's not Giovanni that we should be looking at though. The more curious point is that he tells us he sold his soul to a dark creature. Who this is, we don't know, but Giovanni's soul was divided among a large number of Poes. This does sound like a deal the Horn statue would make, except for a couple problems. The first, when Link deals with the statue, it never deceives him, and it's very straightforward. Giovanni wasn't told he was going to be cursed as a golden statue, and it's kind of hard to have a long and profitable relationship if you constantly curse all of your customers. The other issue is, why was Giovanni's soul split up and given to a bunch of Poes? I guess technically we don't know what the horn statue does with the souls it acquires, but it doesn't seem like the type to share. Other sources claim Giovanni actually sold his soul to the Poes who hold the pieces, but in game he does tell us it was sold to a dark creature. Although it sounds like it could be the spirit in the horn statue, I'm not 100% convinced. In Ocarina of Time, we can find the Ghost Shop, run by a mysterious individual known as the Poe Collector. The Poe Collector, well, collects Poes, the wandering spirits that we can find roaming Hyrule. Link and Cell captured Poes to this collector for money. His apparel also features a Triforce, which usually represents the gods. So maybe this character is a god, like the Horn Statue claims to be? The thing with the Poe Collector though is that he doesn't seem all that powerful like the Horn Statue describes itself. It just seems like he's a regular person who collects Poe's as a hobby. And it's implied this Poe Collector is actually just the guard located in the same location in the time of Child Link, as this guard also talks about collecting Poe's. The Triforce on the Poe Collector could just be part of his old guard uniform, since it also features a Triforce. The Poe Collector appears in Majora's Mask as well, where we can find him in the Spirit House in Akana Canyon. He is very knowledgeable about spirits, being able to sense those still lingering in Akana Canyon and even recognizing the Song of Healing and its purpose. This time though, instead of buying Poe's from Link, he offers training. Surprisingly, if Link completes this training, he tells us his soul has been healed and he fades away, almost like he himself was a troubled spirit. If we dig a little bit, in the second quest for the original Legend of Zelda, we can find an old man who pops up in some dungeons, blocking the way forward, telling us, leave your money or your life. The only way he'll let Link progress is if he sacrifices one heart container permanently or pays 50 rupees. The horn statue tells Link that money and life are all as one to it, wishing to gain either souls or rupees, and it appears this is also the case for the old man. So, is it this obscure, hidden, barely known character who's actually trapped in the statue? We have even less information on him than we do for the horn statue, so it's possible. Or, he could just be some random old man being a dick to Link. But it's also not fair to block someone's path and force them to bargain with you, which is something we don't see with the horn statue either. And speaking of bargains, 
The Bargainer statues can be found located in the depths below Hyrule. Just like the Horn statue and the Goddess statues, we can pray to them, implying they may have also been worshipped in the past. The larger statues, like the Happy Mask Salesman and the Horn statue, offer Link a deal. Find their missing eyes, said to contain parts of their souls, and Link will be rewarded with the choice between either a heart container or stamina vessel, which we know represents Link's spirit. This is another deal involving souls, and the name of these statues as well is reference to their bartering. These statues tell us their eyes were hidden away long ago, and that they've waited for one who can hear their voices to help them, similar to how the horn statue waited for someone who could hear its voice to strike a deal. Their purpose is to return all Poes to the afterlife without prejudice. These Poes, or lost spirits, can be found wandering throughout the depths, and Link can trade them to the bargainers in exchange for items. Some of these items said to be made by the combined powers of the statues. Remember that Aonuma quote about how the transformation masks contain the memories of the souls Link has healed? Well, the reward for finding all of the bargainer statues is the ability to buy the Tunic of Memories, another item the statues create with their combined powers. The Song of Healing is used to heal troubled souls so that they can move on to the afterlife, and using part of those souls can create masks which contain their memories. The job of the bargainer statues is also to help souls move on to the afterlife, and they have the power to create the Tunic of Memories, which if the statues are related to the salesman, means the tunic possibly contains the memories of souls, or even the memories of Link. If this relationship is true, this point also shows us that the salesman is more powerful, since he alone can create masks, whereas it takes the combined powers of the bargainers to create the tunic. The statues could also seem evil, given their appearance and collecting of souls, being located in the depths adds to this idea as well. Being shrouded in darkness and full of wandering pose, the depths almost seem like the underworld or hell of Hyrule, so these statues could be assumed to be demons, like people assume the horn statue is a demon. But the bargainers tell us that good and evil are irrelevant and that there is no distinction in wandering spirits. A smaller bargainer statue can be found in the Great Plateau and interacting with it leads us to see that it can possess a goddess statue. Does that mean the bargainers are more powerful than the goddess statues? Or are they related in a similar way to Hylia and whoever is trapped in the horned statue, the goddess statues being spirits of light, while the bargainers seem like spirits of darkness? And a final, very curious note. The bargainer statues have bodies, usually hidden or buried, but there's one or two, like the Cliff Bargainer statue, where you can see everything. And if you look at its back, you can make out what looks like a face, which is very similar to the face of the moon in Majora's Mask. But also, with the face being on the body of the statue, it's reminiscent of the four giants, also from Majora's Mask. Are these more pieces of evidence to show a relation between the Bargainers and the Happy Mask Salesman? I'll leave this point up to you to decide but it's incredibly strange that they have a face on their bodies. Even though all of these characters share some similarities with the horn statue, I still believe the evidence suggests it's the Happy Mask Salesman, and at this point you're probably expecting some sort of final thoughts or conclusion to this video, but we still have questions left unanswered. The horn statue refers to itself as a god, and if it really is the Happy Mask Salesman trapped inside, how does being a god relate to the salesman? What about Jiren's explanation of how the spirit trapped in the statue is a god who is the opposite of Hylia? What god could she be referring to, since Demise is the only god we know about who could rival her, even though it can't actually be Demise in the statue? And what is the true relationship between the Happy Mask Salesman, Horned Statue, and Bargainers? My original theory was that the Happy Mask Salesman was the one trapped in the Horned Statue which I of course still believe, but from my research for this video I discovered it goes way deeper than just that, and actually answers questions to other theories as well. Everything I've explained so far has basically just been the introduction, and in part 2 of this theory I'll explain how there's much, much more going on with these characters. But until then, thanks for watching.